we're going to change that. Can you hear Can you hear me now? Can you hear us now? All right. I think they can hear us now. Um, All right. So we'll just pretend that the last conversation uh, right, didn't happen. So anyway, yeah. So I dumped the bodies in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> um, got on an airplane, and you know, and that's 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 how I spent my summer vacation last year. So, what? Why would you do it in Nevada? I mean, is it just the 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 dry weather? Do you think that helps preserve them? I would think that would rot them more. Yeah, it's just it's just so open, like you know, it's like you know, needle in a haystack kind of situation. You know? uh, okay, I got it. So it's just harder to find. Yeah. All right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's go back to, let's, let's restart. Hello, John. How are you? Good morning, today, Mike. today is Friday, May 1st. Yeah. And you were, and we were just talking about working at home and whether, wh why we like it or don't like it and stuff like that. And John was telling me, now, did they, do you have a laptop or do you have a, now a No, I have an computer? actual PC. I have like a okay. small, it's like a very small PC. Like it's all, it's probably just slightly larger than my alarm clock. So it's like, okay, they're not have an old alarm clock, but still it's like, it's just a little bit bigger than my alarm clock. So it's just like a, it's like a windows 10 box. You Got know, it. Probably there's enough to get online and just use windows, but that's it. It's yeah. all, I mean, if anything, still like we all have like a digital drive. So it's all just accessing the shared network drive and doing what you can from there. So yeah, when I started at this company it was the first company where they didn't actually issue desktops. They only issued laptops. So it was pretty interesting. Um, but uh, so it was easier for us to work from home when we had to work from home. They just said, go home. Well, I thought I would just work off of my own personal PC and just access the network through, like, the, through a VPN. But now they, they gave everyone their own setups. So, you know, and the whole thing, like, you know, mouse, keyboard, the whole nine yards. Well, it's easier to track on their devices than it would be on your device. I guess, yeah. Because like, so, I mean, can... like, like I said, it's, yeah. it's, you know, now now for the last week or so, I've been forced to work exclusively from home. We were doing like in and out of the office. But, um, you know, if nothing else, it's, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's, 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 it's difficult because when you don't have access to a printer and certain things, it's like you have to really remember to finish certain tasks, especially if a lot of them come in simultaneously. So it's like, how do I make reminders for myself? How do I not forget something that I got in an email? So I've been having to like do more stuff of like, you know, using Outlook to set an alarm, like, you know, in half an hour, don't forget about this and don't forget about that. That's not a bad thing though. Um, like my, cause my laptop also does not connect to my printer because uh, if I have to attach to VPN, I don't always attach to VPN. A lot of my company's um, apps are on the cloud so it's it's easier but the computer still won't attach to my local printer well the thing is i have to attach to vpn because like i said all the stuff we do is just exclusively through the digital drive so. yeah yeah it's it's behind yeah but we, we yeah yeah we use one drive now which is e which even that is in the cloud the only things that yeah. aren't in the cloud are our as 400 and uh some of the in-house apps that we don't have a front-end portal to at the moment right so, but, so we, I, there are still things, but what was funny is having to change our password. This has never worked. When you worked remotely, the answer the help desk always told you, come into the office and plug in. So now people were going, you can't tell us that anymore because we're not doing it. How do we change right. it? And it turns out that there is actually a procedure connected through VPN that you can go through to change your password. I'm wondering if they'll allow people to keep the setup so that they can continue to work from home, like outside of things, like only, only, or at least like, I don't know, like, you know, going forward. I mean, on the one hand, it actually does help to stay productive on a lot of things. On the other hand, it, it doesn't because it's like, I'm not going to lie. I'm sure there's probably a lot more I can get done if I was in the office and I could from home, but at yeah. least, you know, it's, it's better than let's say, you know, only being able to get work done 50% of the time, you know, Why is like that, you? Before, before we got the computers, it was literally just go home. We've got some testing you could do. There's maybe some other stuff here and there, but you really can't really do much without access to the network. So, so, so why is that? What do you feel that you're more productive at the office? Because we just took a survey here and we're as, or more productive. We we're only missing one aspect of, of our office. The only aspect we're missing from the office is uh, whiteboard sessions. But part of it is part of it is access to physical documentation. Like there's a lot of stuff that I do at my job that requires physical docs, or at least for now. Um, part of it also is communication. 
like if you're working with somebody we don't have like a live web chat so it's all either emails or direct phone call oh. so it's like if you need to do something it's like all right i have to reach out to this person i have to wait for them to get back right um and then at the same time part of it is is when you're home i think there is the you know, it is easier to get distracted you know for like all right well you know i you know i'm gonna do this or i'm gonna do that or whatever or we're gonna build a pc like, well, no, I mean, not, 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 I haven't done anything crazy like that. No, I'm talking about, I was talking about me. Yeah. But anyway, enough about work. You know, we already wasted 10 minutes on work talk, so. Twice. We didn't work talk. Well, well, whatever. They didn't hear that first half. So yeah. <laughs> now we have to go an extra five minutes long, so. All right, all right, all right, all right. So what's going on with the X, what's going on with uh, Tabletop? So what can we, what can we say and what we can't say? Because there are things that we're still in the process of discussing. Um, everybody was incredibly happy. The feedback that we got from, uh, and I'll, I'll probably say this again next week when Dave is back on Wednesday. He's not here on Monday though. <clears throat> but the feedback we got for the virtual expo was over the top positive. Um, well over 20 people responded. Well, over 20 people responded, which by the way, is a pretty good return on, uh, on how surveys are usually handled. So that's pretty good. Um, so we, it, people are absolutely wanting to, uh, and, oh, and also the other thing is more players responded than DMs, which is also a good thing. So we'll, people were very happy with the way it was run. People were very happy with the, how it worked and they want to do more. So we will do more. Uh, when and where is a question that's open and we are working on some things now. John, I apologize you weren't there Wednesday. I'd fill you in, but I can't fill you in live because I don't want to say something that we're, we're not. But su suffice to say that we are definitely going to do another one. It's just a matter of timing. That's fine. Yeah. Speaking of stuff and, 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 and um, you know, things as a result of the, of the, of the, of the Web Expo, um, I've also seen a lot more engagement on some of our shows and streams and whatnot because people are now finding more about it through the Discord. Yeah. You know, what a mouth is sharing around. Um, I've also started uploading more of my stuff, my content to the Long Island Tabletop YouTube. So I'm making the effort of making sure that the we built the city episodes, whichever ones which were previously on there, um, kind of cleaning up the titles a little bit and adding some stuff. Um, I have also uh, put up this week's episode myself onto YouTube. Um, which actually came out really great. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, I would definitely check out this week's We Built the City, The Great Flying Steel on <laughs> YouTube. Um, it's steel spelled S-T-E-E-L, although technically you could go both ways depending on the video, but uh, I'd, I'd say check it out. Um, also, have a, a, there was a, a new guest who joined me, uh, Kevin, who uh, came about it for the Discord. Interesting thing is that he said that the, the table the, the tabletop expo we were going to do in april um which you know um you know he was i think he was a part of the online one instead was the first expo or convention that he would have ever actually gone to ever oh, like wow. he had never gone to any kind of show before and he's always thought about it and then he you know he heard about it or saw it and you know just unfortunately because of how things shook out couldn't come to the one in april but he did come to the online one so and he's definitely on board for doing much more stuff so you know Good. Props to, props to Kevin, you know, awesome, uh, good, good job. Um, I've also started uploading um, my friend Dan. Uh, you know, friend you've of uploaded your friend Dan. What? Yes, I've, 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 I've digitized him like that movie Virtuosity with Denzel Washington. Yeah. Um, huh? Or now, Tron. I've uploaded, a, I've uploaded a campaign that he's been running on Wednesdays to YouTube. Um, I might actually stream it to YouTube going forward because I didn't realize that I was uh, interfering with some stuff on Twitch, but um, but uh, I'll, I'm gonna yeah. But at the very least, I'm gonna put the videos up on there. That's Adventures in Gardero, where we unfortunately lost a very beloved NPC um, who took about three times his maximum hit points in a single attack and just had his head galligered. So yeah, well, you know it happens. So you're gonna you're gonna stream it live on YouTube. Or are you going to record I'm thinking it? about it. The problem with the problem with, with the problem with switching from Twitch to YouTube is you have to remember to switch up your keys and everything. So it's like you can't just change the destination. You have to make sure you upload the stream keys too. So I just got to make sure that I have the, both stream keys somewhere where I can 
access them so I don't like forget to switch the other way around. Okay. Um, and then you know lose out on it. But we actually had a bunch of people watching this week's episode too, and there was some cool suggestions and stuff for uh, for we built the city. Um, I think the actual D and D thing too. I want to say if the numbers were right, I don't know how to tell for Twitch, but I want to say it had like at at peak around twenty to thirty viewers. So um, that was actually kind of cool for that. It literally came up with very little to no advertising. So um, I'd have to kind of just see if I could track the metrics just to make sure. But I was watching the stream and I was keeping an eye on the people, you know, watching at any given time. It was uh, yesterday at nine sixteen. Uh, Wednesday at nine sixteen. Well, that's when it ended. You averaged five. I tell. Uh, I'll tell you. You averaged five viewers for almost the whole thing. It looks like you were rated because you peaked at 27 once. Okay. And that was in the middle of the sh- that was right that was actually after it was between 8:15 no it's about 8:30 uh 8:30. Oh, it tells me right here. 8:30 8:35 and then it okay. sharply dropped off to uh it sharply dropped off at 8:40, which it, which by the way has happened on over coffee also. We went up to 40 viewers in one morning, and mm-hmm. turns out that we were rated. That's cool. And 36, so 36 unique viewers. Uh, it, it's actually, it's, it's re- it was really good. But even, look, even at our, at our level now, an average of five viewers is still pretty damn good. Right. So this is. But no, it, I mean the point is, I think I think the expo, and I think you know, it's it's definitely working. Like you know, word of mouth is getting out there. So like you know, people yeah. if they can share it on Facebook, you know, get it out there on Twitch. Uh, I'm not on Twitch, Twitter. Um, you know, Discord. Uh, like I said, the guy, the, you know, Kevin said, like you know, it's it's there's a lot of people who are now getting into the Discord, and if we can keep that growing. Um, we had a conversation uh, about that on Wednesday. Also, uh, I'm cool. going to hold uh, I'm going to hold a meeting this week. Since since uh, I sp- I spearheaded all the online stuff, I'm gonna ha- hold a meeting this weekend, and I'm gonna start bringing people some of the volunteers that want to be part of this. Uh, we're gonna assign uh, admins, we're gonna assign moderators uh, cool. to to Discord, to um, Twitch, to YouTube, uh, and we're gonna be reaching out to other people that want to stream. Listen, we have four channels that we need to fill content on, and. Um, and that that we would like to fill content on, but we need hosts. So I'm going to start training hosts. Um, right. We'll we'll look into it. We're we're going we're moving in that direction. Um, I do have uh, I do unfortunately have one thing I have to say. You have to think of a new title, because YouTube is going to start taking down is going to take down your videos. For what we built this city. Oh, what because of the. Uh, hmm. They've already done it. We've already gotten an email from them. All right, I can go in and change the titles. I'm just trying to think of like what a good name for it would be because it's a world building show. Um, no, you don't have to think of it right now. Just you know, if anybody's got a suggestion, by all means, let John know. But um, the only other thing, John, is uh, Brett Saberhagen. Okay, so I this is going to probably take up the rest of the show. So if you wanted me to go off on this, like I go, okay, l- let me rephrase that. It's I'm going to I'm going to cut in at five minutes too, just to do what we're doing, and then you keep going. All right, because this this def- this on the one hand doesn't involve Brett Saberhagen's, but also does. So okay. last night when I was so okay, no, let me rephrase that. Wednesday, <laughs> when I was playing with my friends, we were talking about Excalibur. Excalibur the hotel and casino in Las Vegas. Got it. Um, when I was editing the video on Thursday, um, I found that Excalibur has an arcade still, or at least they did as of two or three years ago. A friend of mine who I knew from the Long Island Pinball Club, who's uh, cl- uh, kind of associated or friends with Long Island, uh, Long Island Retro, Brendan. Um, Brendan used to do this thing out in Generations Beyond for you know Long Island Pinball, and one of the guys there had this thing called Arcade Hunters. Arcade Hunters was a video that he used to put on Blip or YouTube where he'd go around and just film arcades and stuff like that. That got me into this wormhole of, uh, I'm sorry, rabbit hole of like, there are places that I used to go all the time that there's no evidence of at all. Like no videos, no photography, but it's at a time where such things existed. It's just that, you know, either people didn't think to upload that stuff or they have it and they just never put it on there 
Brett Saberhagen's had a place called Brett Saberhagen's Hit and Fun. It's in Babylon. It's um, on Montauk Highway. It was on Montauk Highway where the, you know where the path mark it was, uh, mm. where it's now it's the best market. Mm-hmm. Um, and across the street, there's that old folks community place. Mm-hmm. So uh, years old ago, folks. that used to be that's a lumber PC yard. of you. What? I said, that's very PC of you. Old folks place. Whatever. So years, years ago, years ago, it used to be a lumber yard. And then after that, it got converted to a batting cage slash like amusement center. Yes. Like Saber Hagen's operated called Brett Saber Hagen's Hit and Fun. The yes. name of the place is online. It's actually on Brett Saber Hagen's Wikipedia page, but there is no photographic evidence at all of the place. Wow. Which was interesting because it was actually like design, like according to Wikipedia, it was designed to look like Emmett's Field. They had some designer who lives in Amityville design the place. It had batting cages. It had like a, a like a mini bowling spot. Like it wasn't really like a full bowling. It was like these little like weird like half like half bowling lanes. Um, eventually, they added laser tag. It had a bunch of arcade games. And I used to go there a ton when it opened up, but like there was literally no photographic evidence. The exact same thing could be said for the Bayshore Roller Rink. The Bayshore Roller Rink was huge when I was younger, and like I used to go there constantly. And other than photos of when people busted into the place when it was dilapidated and like waiting to be torn down, where it was all like covered in graffiti and warped and stuff like that, there's no photographic evidence of what the place even looked like back when it was still around. Got but it. not even like not even like family videos on YouTube and stuff like that. So it got me to thinking that like. There's probably tons of places that are like that, that people remember. That are just you know, gone. Kind of, well, it's not even that it's just gone. It's that like there is, there should be evidence out there, but it's just not there. Either because people just either don't know where the, where the, where the records of it are, or people like don't know where the, um, you know, or they just never uploaded it. Like I'm sure there's like, like photos and pictures that people took from birthday parties and things like that. But like, you know, people aren't exactly in a rush to share that or just don't care enough you know uh, I, I i understand um there's a uh something on the punch bowl that actually still gives the address <laughs> to well, it mean, and the phone and it gives the there. phone number it gives the phone number well it's probably for the old folks home now you know <laughs> or at least i would think but you know what mike had said uh mike lazardi had mm-hmm. said that um, it's the same thing with the old uh, the old commercial for Sundance. Can't find it anywhere, N- nowhere. And uh, you could find we could find advertisements and flyers from back in the day. We could find all of that. We can't find anything, anything. You probably have the same thing for like Sportsplex. You know, Sportsplex was this big, big place out in like Selden or whatever that I had heard about, but I never actually went to. Um, no, well, no, I take that back. I think there is at least like a commercial for Sportsplex. I think I remember seeing somewhere online. But other than that, like no video tours or things like that. Uh, so I found the trademark. <laughs> it's still registered? It, it, no, no, no. It was canceled. Section 8. Oh. Uh, it, does it give a date? Uh, doesn't give a date. Stat. Oh, two thousand five. Two thousand five for when it expired or when it was registered. When it when it expired, it was registered in ninety seven. That makes two- sense because that would make sense because it opened up around the same time I went into middle school, and it closed. Well, like well, I mean, like like getting into middle school. Like yeah. I graduated. I graduated fifth grade in ninety eight. So I would have been in fourth grade. So it would have opened up around like I remember it being peak in like fifth or sixth grade. Um, yeah. In two thousand and five, that would have been when I. Uh, I think that's when I graduated college, or no? I might. I think I graduated high school in two thousand and five. Like I think that was my my senior year of high school, and then I graduated college. I think in oh eight oh nine. I think oh eight. I think oh eight was when I graduated college. It was shaped like Ebbets Field. Yeah, yeah, I was saying like it was shaped like a baseball field. It had batting cages. It had like, um, it had you know they like I said they later on they added laser tag, 
Um, they had arcade machines. They had pinball. Not not a ton of pinball, but um, uh, there was like this little snack section, like in, like a little cafe. You can go and get like pizza and pretzels and stuff. And then there's um, and then it like you said, it was it was uh, designed by Stephen Ray Fellman of Amityville. Yeah, so it was like a local thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a complete. Well, he was a Met, so. Well, yeah. So that's that's pretty, that's pretty funny. But there's other there's other stuff too. Like think of it like so for people who live in New York or people who live in Long Island, think of like Adventureland, and yeah. how many times that that's changed over the years. But only now that thanks to cell phones, do you really see like modern video and photography of it. Like there's definitely things from like years ago at Adventureland that you just can't find. Like. You're either gonna find old timey photos of from like back when like you know that was like a novelty thing, or you're gonna find like you know stuff from like I said like five ten years ago. You're not well, gonna find anything from the eighties or nineties. Well, they did. We, you know the 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 only thing that Adventureland has going for it as far as photos is they have the movie. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Erica even said Sports Plus in Lake Grove, like you were saying. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, sports. Yeah. I thought it was sports plex, but sports plus. Yeah. yeah, but um, is Adventureland as they filmed the movie there about Adventureland. They just didn't call. No, they didn't. They the didn't. funny thing about Adventureland is that Adventureland, the the Adventureland was based on the theme park, but they didn't actually film yeah. it in. The yes, park. yes. No, I know that, right? But at least there's something to commemorate and um, uh, put it together. You know, to to you know, there's nothing here. You're right. There is absolutely nothing on the web about Bart Savahagans. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it's I mean, all like... over the place. No, it's all over the place. It's just there's no. There's no pictures. Photos. There's no pictures. There's no links. It's weird. It's so weird not to be able to find something. Well, like I said, this it's 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 interesting because like as vast as the web is, it's like people knew about these places. People like you know, there's there's stuff about them, but yet like there's no like there's nothing. Probably because it's it's mostly all home videos. I think it's honestly it's because. The technology for documenting that stuff was such a novelty because it'd be so cumbersome and big. Either you'd have like the giant, you know, huge camcorders, or maybe later on you'd have like you know the digital, you know, digital video recorders. But then just getting those to get, you know, getting somebody to go through the effort of fishing that stuff out, yeah, transferring over to digital and then uploading it to like YouTube or something like that. It's just probably people don't care or don't know how. If hey listen, if somebody if somebody out there, uh, if somebody out there has a picture, send it to us. If somebody out there has pictures and or video of Brett Saberhagen's hitting fun, and or Fun Zone and or Adventureland, and or the Bayshore Roller Rink, and or Sports Plus, get that out there. You probably have like the and the, or Sundance. You'd probably, you'd probably have the monopoly of like hits because like you know because there's nothing out there so like if anybody goes looking for that stuff you'd have like all the you know so, all the uh go ahead go ahead, go ahead. no so you'd have all the views so so check this out um uh so i'm on uh wiki visually which has pictures from all over the place and it's all about brett right and it has a whole section on Brett Saberhagen's hit and fun, and just everything that we've just gone over. Right? It was thirty thousand square feet. Blah 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 blah. But the pictures are of various businesses and restaurants in Babylon Village, Argyle Lake, mm -hmm. Ebbets Field, uh, Ray Caldwell pitching in the first exhibition game at Ebbets Field, the Amityville Village Hall, and a panoramic map of Amityville. That's as close as they got to pictures of hit and fun. How funny that is! So funny, John. All right, all right. You win. I can't believe he doesn't have pictures of it on what? the web. I mean, I don't. I, I he probably built the place, but I, I honestly, I wasn't even like I liked the Mets because my family was into the Mets, but like I didn't really care. He could have been like walking around there on a daily basis, and I wouldn't have recognized him. You know, listen, but I might not, probably... have, I might not recognize him either. But I was, um, I was a fan of his. I like, I liked Brett Saberhagen. Like, I used to collect baseball cards, and I was into baseball back, uh, back in the eighties and nineties. 
and um, I remember him as a player. Uh, so I mean, I, it was it was a fun place. I remember going there constantly, and like I said, it was it was always like you know they had some really fun arcade machines. Everything was actually kept in pretty good working order. Um, you know, there wasn't that many local batting cages to Lindenhurst. No, like, you know, like if you're in Lindenhurst, Babylon, Amityville. There was no, and they had the automated machines too. Like they, you didn't have to pitch to yourself. Like they had like the thing where like, you know, it, it, the ball would spit out at you. You know what I mean? Well, there was a place in Farmingdale or Melville, whatever. The one well, there's, that, I, yeah, there's a, there's like a, yeah, but this was also, this was an indoor batting, you know, batting place. That was this indoor was in Melville. Oh, all right. The one, it was in, a, um, it was in the warehouse. It was in, I, I wonder if it's still there, um, but it was uh, off of New Highway. It was like it was it was off of New Highway. It's like right around where um, Southern Hobby is. Oh, okay, up in that area. I've only I had only been there once for a friend's uh, birthday. Or I think I know what go. you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's there's some kind of like a warehouse slash like I think it's actually like it might be like an MMA place now, or, or I might be oh, thinking about okay. it. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure. I don't if it was know. I just, I know there's like there's some kind of like a sports thing. I just don't remember yeah. exactly. You know if it's the same thing or not. But um, no, but it was it was a cool place. They had uh, there was a lot of really awesome arcade machines. I saw there for the first time. They kept it pretty, you know, modern. Um, didn't really have a lot of the old old stuff, but I mean, like still, like you know, I remember they had this thing called Pop Cycle. Pop Cycle is this arc- is this game that can only exist in the arcades because it was an actual like bicycle, but it also had like um, gyro sensors. Right. So it was like you basically would pedal and it would it would flap the wings and it's like this flying like bike. And like you know, you'd have to like lean down, lean up, and it was it was hard because you'd get exhausted after playing it for a while. Of like you know, because you'd have to like. Uh, uh, uh. So it was the dance dance revolution of the old days. <laughs> kind of the bike bike revolution. Yeah. So um, all right, so that so quickly, um, as we're getting towards the end, uh, I'd like to say tonight we have basically D and D. Um, where I will introduce a couple more rules. Uh, nothing, nothing earth shattering at this point, but there will be some. <clears throat> I, uh, but I, I, I am going to talk with the players and recommend a change, a slight change in format. I would like to move a little bit more away from roll twenty, so to speak, and more into theater of the mind, only to see if we can get a better flow in the game, so we don't get bogged down. But we'll Dan, talk about it tonight. Um, uh, uh, Rich, you should check out the YouTube video that I, I, I uploaded for Dan's game because there's a website that he uses that works very well for tokens. And there's also another website that works, uh, Roll Dice with Friends. Yeah, and if you... I'm not checking it out. I don't like Dan that much. I'm only kidding. Well, no, the <laughs> Roll Dice with Friends, it's a visual thing so you can see what the results are, you know, so you can see that and it's cool. And then the other one is uh, Mwipui or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's a tile-based system. You still have to draw on your maps. You could still do, like, obscuring and stuff like that, but that's just because you have to kind of, like, just cover it in black or whatever. Look at the YouTube video, and like I said, you'll just, you'll see what I mean. I will. Um, the only- Actually, what? how about this? I got a better idea. Why don't we just ask Dan to send me the links? I mean, I could probably just send you the links. So they yeah, just send me the links. Yeah, so, send me the links. I'll um, check them. I will. I will check them out. Do, yeah, fine. I will check them out. But I still would like to. I would still like to. I would still like to get into more of uh, yeah. theater yeah, of the mind. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But we'll talk uh, to answer Erica. We would. I would like to start uh, basically D and D at nine o'clock. So maybe we can get together just a little bit beforehand, so I can set up the uh, the the. I'll be good. Yeah, just shoot me a. Yep. Uh, so nine o'clock. Also, Annie Sloth says is we built this city on dice and rolls a cease and desist safe name that's a good question i have no idea i think i think we were talking about that because it was going to be dice and rolls the only issue is that it's a very long title and i feel like for stuff like you want to have it like punchy like ad copies like if you can't say it in like in, in like let's say like you know a certain number of syllables if you can't fit it on a t-shirt you know what i mean uh. gotta be something like um it's gotta have like a really like snappy kind of like you know it kind of could be a, like a punny title. I I wish I wish everybody had watched Gumball. I just watched an episode where uh, the principal comes in and he says a whole long winded thing of adult terms, and uh, Anais was like said, "Oh, all the computers in the library have a vi- caught a virus because somebody opened their browser right. to, to download." Uh, a bad website 
<laughs> and I was like, and it was from what he said. Uh, and he was like, you know, something like something like the computers are got a cold because I think I remember seeing that clip because it was like, oh, people have been using it to watch cartoons online, and right? I, you know, oh, who would do oh that? to do to do an illegal stream when he goes because uh, they went and saw because they furrowed their brow to see a river. Oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, by the way, I've been thinking about Dan because I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, I saw my copy. Yeah. So I pulled it out of a box that I unpacked, and um, I'm going to run it. I'm going to run yeah. it for a group on Wednesday, or I may actually do some this weekend. i got to see. Coming up this weekend, Gaming Haven with the Thread Raiders. Um, they will be running a, a weekend of gaming online. Uh, I am playing, and I am playing and hosting tomorrow morning's 8 a.m., and then I am hosting uh, 8 a.m. on Sunday uh, for them. So are there going to be links to their stuff on the sh on the Discord? Uh, there will be links to their stuff on their Discord. Uh, I have no reason. There should be no reason why they can't come to our Discord and post it. I will let uh, CA know that she should post it up in our in our. Uh, you know, like looking your, for, you can even put on the looking for game. Hype you know, your like stuff. Game. Well, I, well, I think they're, I think oh, they're hype filled. your stuff. Hype your stuff. Yeah, hype your idea. stuff. Uh, you know, the, she should absolutely post her stuff and, and hype your stuff. Um, and now others should feel free to, to do that too. So there should be zero reason because, you know, it's pretty cool. And um, I think that's about it. Right. Okay. I think that's about it. Um, I'm the good whole here. We yeah, built, I'm good here. So. Me. We built the city soon to be called something else. Maybe that should be your name. We built the city soon to be called something else. No, again, it's, it's I know it's too funny. long. I know, I know. But if you're gonna go with a long name, that's a good long name. And uh, basically, D and D tonight at nine p.m. here on Twitch. I have nothing else. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right then. Good morning. Good morning. Enjoy the rest of your day. And send us photos of Brett Saberhagen. It's in the fun. Yes. If you have them, send them. Thank you. <laughs>